we have some very special guests today with us. Um, before I introduce our special guest speaker, not too long ago, we had the privilege of, um, of, of the men uh, through the Arkansas Department of Corrections joining us, and that's what's taking place today. This message is going to be heard at the Arkansas Correctional uh, Institute in Cummings, outside of Pine Bluff. So we want to welcome the men at Cummings Prison into our service today. Come on, let's let them know that they are welcome, and we are so honored that they are joining us today. And we are so privileged. Uh, one, of our, one of our missionaries, Bob Holyfield, who's been with us on our missions day, uh, we, he reached out and I reached out to him and just said, hey, is there a way that, uh, that we can be a, a blessing to the men? And he said, most definitely. And so today we welcome the men there at Cummins Prison and we're excited that what God is doing in your life and thank you for being part of this journey. And uh, we, we may not be able to see you now, but one of these days we'll get to meet and greet and have a celebration in heaven. And so welcome. Come on, let's welcome them one more time from Cummins Prison today. We're excited that they're a part of our service. Well, today, this morning, we start our spiritual emphasis uh, week, and I want to encourage you this week to continue praying and fasting and seeking the Lord. And uh, today and next Sunday and even tonight are just shots in the arm of what we've already asked God to do in our life. And I, I'm excited this morning to introduce to you uh, Pastor Ronnie and Diane Morris. And they are our newly elected, I say newly, it was back in May, uh, uh, he is our new district superintendent of the Assemblies of God of Arkansas. And I know for some of you go, okay, what is that? He is the president of the Assemblies of God Fellowship in the state of Arkansas. And before, before that, he served as our assistant district superintendent and has made an impact upon the state of Arkansas and also other districts. Um, spent over 15 years pastoring at Russellville First Assembly. In fact, uh, Lindsay Bolstad, uh, I don't know, if there you are back in the back, Lindsay, she was singing on the worship team. When she uh, goes to college at Arkansas Tech, she would attend Pastor Ronnie and Diana's church and absolutely loved it and enjoyed it. And so, uh, Lindsay, you've got a home here and also in Russellville. But also, Pastor Ronnie has uh, written a book that he's going to share. In fact, last year in one of our resources that I would share with you each month, uh, through our Bible reading. It was one of the books that I encourage you to, to purchase and to read. It's entitled, Read It and Reap. And so it was talking about getting into the Word of God. And if you have not gotten that book uh, downloaded or purchased, I encourage you to do so. Mine is still sitting. I've got a stack of books that I reference and I go back to on my, on my credenza. And that was one of them still. It's still sitting there. But it's an honor and privilege to have our district superintendent here today, Pastor Ronnie Morris. Would you give this godly man an assembly welcome, as we always do for our guests? Let's welcome our district superintendent this morning. Bless you, man. I love you, buddy. I love you too. Yeah. God bless you. Good morning. And man, I, I, I tell you, I wish my mom was here. She may be joining us online. I know my, my brother is. He texted me this morning and where are you where are you this Sunday? And so I have to tell him and he finds me and then uh, I call him just to kind of let him encourage me in the Lord a little bit. But uh, I've been treated so wonderfully since arriving last night um, and uh, just appreciate the, the, the presence of the Lord here. I usually tell people I'm a pastor, uh, that's what God called me to be when I was uh, just a teenager in high school, and I was driven to that, but I'm a pastor by day and I'm a revivalist by night, and I love a move of God, and I'm so thankful uh, to be invited on this beginning of your spiritual emphasis uh, week. Uh, and one of those keys is, is, is the Word of God and, getting, and, and hearing a word from the Lord. Um, but the key to that is and most of what you're going to hear from God is going to be through His Word, right? Amen. Now listen, you won't scare me. I'm Pentecostal. <laughs> All right? So don't, don't worry about that. I'm used to a lot of stuff. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, I, I did write a book, and I want to give uh, I want to give one of these I want to give a couple of these books away. 
uh, who, who's, who here are you? first one to respond? Uh, you, you've made a, a steady diet of the Word of God. Every year you read the Bible through. You read it through every year? All right, come right here. I saw you first. And you're sitting up close to the front. So, hey, thanks. May I pray it be a blessing to you. Read it and reap. All right? And for a young person today, you haven't read the Bible through, but you will commit this year. I will tell you, I have a little story here about uh, uh, some of the experiences I have. I have a story here about uh, me and my brother, Stephen Curtis Chapman, his brother, Herb Jr. You'll, you'll want to hear that story. Uh, any, a young person says, I, I will commit to reading the Bible through this year. I want to give this to you. Where you at? All right, here you go. I'll come down to you, bro. Yeah. Hey, now all you have to do is just let me know you did that, all right? At the end of the year. Okay, good. Good. It changed my life. I almost failed the, first, the fifth grade. It's the truth. I almost failed the, fifth, uh, failed the fifth grade. You'll find that story there in, in the book. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing how God will turn your life around and renew your mind. And I was challenged to read the Bible through when I after I was called to preach, and I read it through, and it renewed my mind and changed me. And so uh, I just, I, I love the Word of God. Uh, I'm, I'm already, I'm already reading the Bible through again this year, so I uh, encourage you to do that. I have some more books. Uh, as long as they last, you, you're, you, I'm going to give them away. It was my best-selling book. Well, it's the only book I ever wrote. It was my best-selling book, and it didn't sell very well, so I started giving them away. It's, I, uh, I really do believe this morning I have a word from the Lord, and um, I got so excited about what I felt like the Lord was going to do, and I've done a, a, a thorough uh, research on the beginning of the year in the Bible. Uh, I, will, I will tell you there are a couple of uh, new years that the, the Jewish people uh, celebrate. Uh, one is, is uh, around March, the other is in September. So one is a religious year, one is a civil year. Um, regardless, though, I do believe there are very specific things that uh, the Bible says concerning the beginning of the year and the promises that he makes not just from a an old and new testament but he has something very specific i was in a church not long ago and they had a they had two services in between the services they wanted me to go and just share a little bit of my vision and they wanted me to a answer questions now that could always be interesting but in the process of uh, the question and answer, they said, well, what do you see for 2022? Man, I was just barely seeing what was going to happen tomorrow, much less what was going to happen in 2022. And I just had to admit to them that I, you know, I, I'm really just trying to hear the Lord right now as, as what he has for me because I was r rather new in the district office and and since the Lord has really given me a real word for and direction for our, our district and our state. But when I look at the word of God, I found out that there's something very specific that he wants to do. And um, I, want to, I just want to share a couple of scriptures with you. And I want to tell you, according to the word of God, this is God's year to act. This is God's year to act. You can count on it. It's, it's true. Uh, there is a scripture, uh, a couple of scriptures. One is Psalm 65, 11, it says, I love this. I, I just, I'm, I'm reminded of it year after year. He says, you crown the year with your goodness and your past drip with abundance. He says he circles the year with, your, with his goodness. What that means is, is that he, his angels camp round about you and anything that comes to try to interfere with you being blessed that year, he is going to ward all of that off because he wants you to be blessed this year. Come on, anybody want to receive that today? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some stuff that, that, uh, that, that I believe that if you receive and believe, this can be the greatest year of your life. How many needs a great year? 
We've been battling, haven't we? But I want to tell you that we're living in the kingdom of God, not in the kingdom of man. I want to say something to somebody in here. You've been, you've been focused on the kingdom of man and what man has had to say, but God is about to change your direction, and he's going to tell you it's not about the kingdom of man. It's about the kingdom of God, his righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, and no matter what is happening around you, no matter the storms that is coming at you, you are built on a strong foundation. I think we sang something about that this morning and God is going to take care of you he said in Luke chapter 4 verses 16 through 19 this is in the message Bible and Jesus you know he came, he went to Nazareth and uh, at the beginning of his ministry and the I love what it says there as he always did on the Sabbath now let me just uh, let me encourage you and those of you online is that God still means for us to meet together Church, the word church in its singular form is still plural. I'll just let that soak into you. In its singular form is still plural. When two or three are gathered together in his name, he is in the midst of us. He means for us to come together and not stay at home. Just thought I'd throw that in. Because it was, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> As he always did on the Sabbath, as he always did on the Sabbath, as he always did on the Sabbath. If it was necessary for Jesus to go to church on the Sabbath, it's important and necessary for us to be in the house of God. He went to the meeting place. When he stood up to read, he was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it was written, God's Spirit is on me. Ooh, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's chosen me to preach the message of the good news to the poor. He sent me to announce pardon to the prisoners. Prisoners. He, the Bible says here, he has sent me to recovery to, to the recovery of the sight to the blind to set the burden and the battered free and to announce i love this this is god's year to act hallelujah uh, if you can believe it you receive it this morning and believe that this year is god's year to act There's so many of us that talk about such resolutions as I'm going to determine to make more time for family. I want to, I, I want to get fit. I want to lose weight. Some want to quit smoking. They want, to, they want to get out of debt. They want to learn something new. All kinds of New Year's resolutions. Now listen to this. But usually it goes in one year and out the other. You guys are quick. You guys are really, I'm impressed. Yeah. Really, nothing in this list remotely comes close to what the Bible says should be the focus for this year. We need to move. We need a move of God. We need to get our minds back and our emphasis back on God. We need a new beginning. We need a renewed desire for the presence of God. We need a time to receive a word from the Lord. We need to understand that God's outpouring of the Holy Spirit and promised blessings are for right now, not somewhere in the future. We need to remember the, and reflect upon the finished work of Jesus. I believe that's where God is taking us. C.S. Lewis stated this, this, he said, aim at heaven and you'll get earth thrown in. Aim at earth, and you get neither. You've often heard, well, you can be so heavenly minded, you'll be no earthly good. I can tell you, you really be no earthly good if you're not heavenly minded. Keep your mind set on things above, not on the things of the earth. What we need 
to understand is God wants to give us a new beginning. I heard uh, recently somebody said, boy, I just wish that life was like a chalkboard with stuff written on it. You could just take the eraser and wipe out everything that, that has happened. But can I tell you that the Lord is the Lord of new beginnings. He has, he has a new thing ready. He, in fact, he said he would do a new thing. We read in Genesis chapter 8, and as I surveyed the Word of God and found out things that was happening in the first month, I, I want you to listen. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the what? First month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. It's hard to imagine what Noah had experienced in that hundred years following God's command to build the ark. But the Bible says Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was just and perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And he started his new beginning in the proper manner because after a few days in the second month after that first year when the rain subsided what did Noah do he and his and all eight of them all eight of them by the way eight the number eight means new beginnings and Noah and his family walked out and what did he do in that beginning he made an altar to the Lord there was the new beginning, and there is where God is calling us to, is that he is calling us to a new beginning in a relationship with the Lord. The Bible says in Joshua 4, 19, he says, And the people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. I just believe that is significant for us to understand that there is a new beginning for us in this first month that God declares there's a promise that's available to you. There's a whole new world that's available to you. And God says, this can be a new beginning. I'm so thankful for the church of the living God that every Sunday morning that we can walk in here and we can come to an altar uh, of, of, of mercy and the grace of God and we can say, Lord, I sure messed that one up pretty bad. And he said, it's okay. I'm going to take care of you and we can repent and turn to him and he says all things are passed away and behold all things are become new glory to God it's a new day for somebody in this house it's a new beginning for somebody here that will say Jesus I just come into your loving arms and I receive your blessings in my life glory I believe that this month in this beginning is, is, is so critical to, to, to us and, and, and in, a, in a world, and, and, and I don't want to be, I don't want to bash anybody, but we must set our focus on the cross. We must, here's the way I want to put it, we must remember and reflect upon the finished work of Christ. The whole of the Old Testament the whole of the Old, Tos Old Testament, for, for your understanding, because, you know, the Old Testament can get, get quite complicated. You know, just start trying to read the names in 1 Chronicles chapter 1. My secret to reading 1 Chronicles chapter 1, verse, uh, chapter 1 through chapters 9 is to let somebody read it for me. Just a little secret, because I can butcher those names up really, really bad. But here's, here's the key to understanding the scripture. Number one, it's about a person. His name is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. If you want to understand the Word, understand I'm looking for a person. 
The second thing is that is what is the purpose of the word? It is to through through the person there is a there is a gospel that is going to take place, and that gospel is the death, burial, and re- resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you understand, in fact, you can you can begin reading Genesis three fifteen. He says uh, uh, he says the serpent's going to bruise his heel, but praise God, he is going to crush his head. That's the gospel. And understand that, that we need to continue not to, not to preach pop psych, not to be psychoanalyst, not to just hype people up, but we need to preach the unadulterated gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice, I'll just, just, just one illustration. In the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, and you can read it also in, in, in the book of Exodus. He spoke to the children of Israel. They had been in bondage 400 years. They were crying out to God, get us out of here. We're in bondage. We need deliverance. And he said, if you want a new beginning, you got to focus on the finished work. you got to look forward in faith. Watch this. On the 10th day, of the first month choose the lamb tomorrow is the 10th day of our first month and i want to encourage you and your family as far as me and my house we're going to serve the lord in that first month on that first uh, on that 10th day we're going to say we're going to choose the lamb of god which takes away the sin of the world and, and I want to tell you what happened, friend, because they chose the lamb and the blood that they sacrificed that lamb with was covered over their doorpost. I can tell you they came out of that bondage. Not The death angel passed over them. It, death did not touch a one of them as it, as it wreaked havoc all around them. Thousands shall fall by my side and 10,000 by my right hand, but it shall not come near me. He said, I will protect them. I'm the Lord thy God that heals you. He not, they not only came out of there, but they came out of there with the blessings as the Egyptians gave them all of their goods for their journey that was ahead of them. Can I tell you, that's what the blessings of God does when we focus on choose the lamb on the 14th day. Uh, the, that lamb was sacrificed and they came out. I want to tell you it is our time to come out of darkness into marvelous light. It is time to focus on the lamb of God. He spoke principalities and powers and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. What? How did he triumph over them? He did it through the cross of Calvary. We focus on the finished work of Jesus. We focus on that Passover. I believe I believe that We must get back to preaching the simple gospel. I I love Psalms 103 and the benefits of salvation. Everything you need is in the Lamb. I said everything you need is in the Lamb. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all his benefits. He forgives all of our sins. <laughs> the past, the present, and the future has been dealt with on the cross. And if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He heals all of our diseases. And I want to emphatically go on record this morning and tell you I still believe in the healing work of Jesus Christ. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he changes not. He is the Lord, our God, that heals us. You cannot separate the gospel and healing because healing is in the gospel by his stripes I am healed Woo. I just wonder if there's anybody that wants to take a healing this morning I said I just wonder if there's anybody that wants to take a healing the enemy has been so trying so hard to keep us from even getting up here this morning 
But I can tell you he is a liar, and by the Lord's stripes, I'm healed. I could barely talk. I, was, I sounded like a, a bass singer yesterday. I like bass singing, by the, by the way. I like it. <laughs> but I don't want to sound like a bass singer trying to preach this morning. It's the gospel. He heals all our diseases. He redeems our life from destruction. Already before it happens, he's got it taken care of. I'm glad that his angels are camped around about me. I was on the, I was on the slave block of sin. I deserve to be a slave, but I want to tell you that because Jesus Christ, he came, he took my place, he bore my sins, he redeemed me, he paid the price. Oh, it's enough to say, God, I just want to focus on the cross. I want to focus on what you've done for me. You, in fact, that word redemption means he took us out of the, out of the slave market, he purchased us, and he set us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. You're a child of God you're an heir of God uh, I think I'm a little more happier than some of you are today <laughs> but I realized I had a head start and by the time I finish I know you're gonna be as happy as me but redeemed by his blood he's crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercy just to think his mercies are new every morning great is his faithfulness he satisfies our mouth with good things so our youth is renewed as the eagles. Now, I'm really laying on that right there, brother. And then he says, watch this. And then, and then he says, he's executing righteousness and justice upon all who are oppressed. That, I mean, isn't that enough just to say, oh, I'm going to focus on the finished work of Christ in the beginning of this year. There's a third thing. There needs to be a fresh desire for the presence of God. A fresh desire for the presence of God. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 40, verses 16, 17, Moses had built the tabernacle. And Moses, thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did he. And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was raised up. I just can't overemphasize the, what we're doing here. What, what you see on this platform this morning in, in worship, that is a prophetic revelation of Acts 15. He is raising up the tabernacle of David. It's not a physical tabernacle. It is, it is a spiritual tabernacle of, of, of what you, we are experiencing worship before the Lord this morning. What's this? When they dedicated that tabernacle, the Bible says the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. You may wonder, well, what about the presence of the Lord? I love the tangible presence of God. The last time I checked, we're, we're Pentecostals. They accuse us of being emotional anyway. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm emotional. You know, I was not raised in the assemblies of God for the first 12 years of my life, but I got here as quickly as I could. And I've enjoyed the experience ever since I, I came and, and was baptized in the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. And I thought I got to get back to church so I could get some more of that. Not realizing he was with me and they was filling me all the time. But I've experienced some great things in the house of God. I mean, I've been slain in the spirit, and that may be foreign to some of you, but I can tell you, as John the Revelator said, I was slain before the Lord. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I fell before his feet as dead, and we come into a fresh 
a fresh time in the presence of the Lord. He said, when we're, listen, when we're gathered together in his name, he is there in the midst of us. Can you imagine that this morning that God so graciously would give us his presence? And anytime you read in the word, in Solomon, when Solomon built his tabernacle, the Bible says the glory of God fell in that place where the ministers could not even stand, could not enter in because of the glory of God pastor at a historical church at Russellville I mean there was there was just supernatural things that's happened through the history of that church An evangelists came in and and they, they said they literally backed a truck up and started loading wheelchairs and 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 crutches because of the miracles that were taking place in the very inception of that church, uh, uh, a, a brother Burris, uh, who I think later became the, one of the superintendents, he was, he was close by that church when there was a tent out there, and they were having a tent revival, and he looked out the window, and he noticed that the top of the, the tent was on fire. Got dressed and went over to that and realized it wasn't the fire at all. It was the glory of God that was manifesting in that place. And he slid himself into the altar and got right with God and got saved. Do it again, Lord. Manifest your presence afresh and anew. We become so sophisticated and so complicated that we just want to go through the motions can i tell you i believe our greatest days are in front of us if the bible is true and i believe it is he said the last days i'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh it talks about young people it talks about young young men young women old men will dream dreams young young uh, young men will see visions if we believe the Bible and we believe that I believe that we're in the last days, that we're going to see that manifested. And if there's any, if there's any group that stands to, to be benefit and to bless this nation, it's the assemblies of God because we believe in a move of the Spirit. And we have constantly be at the forefront of leading this country in a move of God. We cannot back up now. It's, it's, it's important that we leave. And I just want to speak over Siloam Springs in the name of Jesus. You're going to be one of those churches that's going to exemplify what the glory of God is. And they will hear it from the four corners of this nation. And they will say, God is on the move. You're going to lead. Fresh desire for the presence of, of God. We need it. The glory, listen, the glory of the latter house is going to be greater than the former. That's what the Bible says. The manifest, the manifest presence of the Lord, he's going to show up. We just need to be sensitive enough to him. I've often said, please don't, don't throw any stones at me. The most controlled place in the, in the church is the platform. We need to just seek the face of God and allow his presence to manifest the way that he so desires. Come on. I believe that we're going to be in a moment of real warfare. Spiritual warfare, not a warfare of flesh and blood. This is going to be a season of warfare. There, it, listen, that, that doesn't have to be prophetic. It's the Word of God. I love, I love, in fact, one of my favorite books is the book of Esther. I've done a great deal of study in the book of Esther. Love it. So many, so many spiritual truth. E e Esther is, 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 is the church, really. And Haman is the devil, for crying out loud. But what's this? Esther chapter 3, verse 12. You, you know what happened. But Esther started to rise up to be the queen. The enemy knows it. So what does he do? He declares a death edict on the people of God. And I tell you, 
And you, we're seeing, I just read an article, uh, just, just, just saw the caption of what's going on in Canada and the persecution of the church and the Christians and the declaration of war against them. Listen, all that will, all that will serve God, you're going to suffer persecution. And, but we are in warfare, but it's not against flesh and blood. It's easy to take it out, and we've seen what that does. It does nothing. But we're going to fight with the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal through the flesh, but mighty in God to the tearing down of strongholds. But there was an edict of death in Esther's day that spoke and said on a certain day, 12 months later, which would be our, which we could just say would be our December, that, that they would wipe out all of Israel. And I tell you today, there is a devil who's out to steal, kill, and destroy. But I want you to know this morning that there is a God who's, who's armed you and given you authority and given you dominion. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you will condemn. For this is the heritage of the saints in light, and their righteousness is of me, saith God. Now sometimes that word is misquoted. That word is misquoted. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal through the flesh, but mighty in God and pulling down strongholds. And it's misquoted. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, watch this. It's not he that's going to condemn it. It's you that condemns it. Ooh, it got quiet in here. You need to understand there's power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And God has given you authority with the word of God. And you speak to that devil with the word of God. When he says something to you, you say, it is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God's given you his word over all power of the enemy. We're going to be victors just like it was for Esther. Because later on when they found out that this edict was upon the edict of death, they wrote another law, Mordecai let it. Mordecai is the type of Jesus, the Word of God, and they rewrote the Word and gave them the opportunity to fight. It didn't, it didn't uh, undo what was written because there is an evil in this world. It doesn't undo what the devil has authority in, but you need to know that he's been cast down in the name of Jesus, and God has given you authority to tread upon lions and, and, and serpents and over all power of the enemy. God has given you authority, friend. And, and, and we can talk a lot about COVID and, and, and it's the, the reality, but I can also tell you with COVID, there's a spirit, and you need to understand that there's a spirit along with that, and we need to take authority over all power power of the enemy come on just a couple more things it's time to receive a word from the Lord Ezekiel 29 17 says this and it came to pass in the 7th and 20th year what's this have I been showing you about the first month in the first month, in the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, there's a fresh revelation and a fresh word from the Lord. Come on. I have um, started my Bible reading through this year. And um, as I was reading, Pastor um, I'm reading about the life of Abraham, and it overwhelmed me. Um, it overwhelmed me as I began to read that, and the Lord began to speak to me about you. And this is unprecedented, and and something I don't I don't do, but I felt very. I mean, I felt so moved to do what I'm about to do. You who are listening this morning, what I'm about to say to him will also be a part of God's covenant promise to you because it's going to flow to the pastor. What's this? Unto the angel of the church write. That word angel means messenger. 
here's your messenger. As I began to read in the 15th chapter specifically, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. I want you to hear it. And I just had to write these things down as I, as I wanted to speak to you, that the Lord has made a covenant with you. But it is all his doings. It's everything about him. And all, and all you must do is simply believe. When you read that 15th chapter and you read about the cutting of a covenant, by the way, it's not an Abraham anointing. It's an Abraham covenant. And God's made that Abraham covenant with you through his seed, Jesus Christ. All right? All you need to do is believe. Abraham was an obedient servant. And God asked him to obey and trust him for what he was asking and where he was leading. Obedience is what he's asking of you. He is asking of you, don't concern yourself with the challenges. He will help you until you see the results. He's already been dealing with you. Your concern, your concern and your passion, I know that passion. This is not prophetic. I know what your passion is. And that is for people that you can pass on what God has, has given to you. And you've done that very well. But I want you to know that God is raising up sons of the faith that you lead. And they're going to do what, what you've been doing here and, and where God has led you. He is going to use you exponentially as you pour into them. And when they go to where they are, that God is going to, going to give them a double portion of what he's placed on you. Hmm. Can I get a witness? Opportunities to expand and influence the kingdom of God will be bigger and greater than you can comprehend. Listen. Your best and most productive years are in front of you, not behind you. I, I want to step out a little bit further. I don't know if you realize what God is doing yet. I believe you do because of the wonderful leadership of Pastor Gary and Crystal. But the best is yet to come. This area is a blessed area. People are going to come. I even thought, I even thought that, that, that this will be a place where there will be uh, parachurch type ministries. They will be flowing in here because of the influence of this church. I also believe that they're, they're, th th this place is, is going to grow and people will want to come to this area and, and, and they'll want to, 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 to have industry and, and, and influence. Come on. It's a possibility that I won't say lean times that you'll face, but challenging to the point to believe God for even greater things. But I have come to tell you today that you will always have enough to do the will of God. There will never be a lack. In fact, people will come to give because of, of your leadership and because of the generosity of your people. They will come and they will give to you because they see exactly what God is doing through what, what, what you're doing here. Does that make any sense? You're a man of the altar anyway. You're... You, People don't know what you do in secret. But I want to tell you what you've been doing in secret, God is going to, he's going to show it openly. Friends, you don't, I don't know, and I want to just take a moment here. No one really knows what a pastor goes through. I've spent 40 years of my life as a pastor 
on the front line of ministry. I've identified bodies in the morgue. And that's just some of the light stuff. By, by the bedside of people that have gone to heaven, I've, I've been in the middle of a situation where uh, somebody would say, I've got to see you right now, me and my husband. And when they get there, they said, you better do something today or I'm going to kill him. And she meant it. She wasn't playing. And we talk about, and I'm grateful for law enforcement, I'm grateful for military, but I want to just tell you something. You know who's with them all the, all, all the way? It's the pastor. And the thing I know about you is you have a pastor's heart. There's a pastor. You want to find real pastors? You have the best. You're so humble and selfless that it is hard for you to imagine the Lord expanding your ministry anymore. But your tent's about to expand. Your influence is about to expand. I'm, I'm, listen, don't get, don't get worried here. It's not about him leaving here. I just want to make that really clear. It's not about you leaving. He can do everything he needs to do and needs to from right here. So don't. Don't say, oh, I hate my, I'm going to worry about past. Listen, you're not listening to me if you, if you think that. You will lead in, way of, in the way of worship that is with your life, your lips, and your livelihood. Some may question, but your determined worship will encourage the most reluctant. I enjoyed just sitting by you this morning and worshiping with you. You influenced me. I could say more, but I want to tell you, your prophetic ministry and the healing ministry is going to increase. Come on. Can I get a witness this morning? It's time to receive a word from the Lord. Now listen to me. That word for you is a message to this congregation. And as you lead them, it will happen exponentially in this church, as it did with the influence in the coming generations. Just really the last thing this morning, and I, I, I certainly have a, more that I, I, I could share, but I'm going to ask Kurt and his, and the worship team to come and And I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. God says to you, as we are facing beginning of this spiritual emphasis and we are we're facing uh, uh, all kinds of challenges God is the new year by the way he says I'm going to do a new thing he says I'm your next chance at the art of living I'm your opportunity to practice what you've learned about life during the last 12 months. All that you sought and didn't find is hidden in me, waiting for you to search it, but with more determination. All the good that you tried for and didn't achieve is mine to grant when you have fewer conflicting desires. All that you dreamed but didn't dare to do. All that you hoped but did not will. All the faith that you claimed but did not have. The slumber and light waiting to be awakened by the touch of a strong purpose. I'm your opportunity to renew your allegiance to me. Because I say, behold, I make 
all things new. I make all things new. This is your opportunity. I know we're nine days into this year. I do believe the tenth day is a very significant moment in this year. I believe the tenth day is a very significant moment. When you look at the Word of God, you will find out the tenth day. They chose the lamb on the tenth day. From the time that Jesus ascended to heaven, there were ten days before the church was birthed and the power of the Holy Spirit descended. It was ten days that Daniel and his friends had a restricted diet. And after ten days, they came out ten times better. Can I, can I get a witness this morning? This is your opportunity this morning to step out in faith. It is a faith moment. It is an Abraham moment to step out in faith in a new beginning. Can you imagine? The Lord told Abraham, hey, listen, I want you to go somewhere. Where? I, well, just go. <laughs> and he did. This morning, I don't know, some, some reason that the number four has been very, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, it's just kind of crazy this week, it's just the number four, and I just thought I'd look it up, and it, it, it's a door. It means a door. It's a door of opportunity. And so this morning, I, I just want, I just want to, I just want to play like for a moment. These are doors at every opening of these altars, and they are doors of opportunity where you can step into a new beginning, a new desire for the presence of the Lord, a new relationship with Jesus. If you're here this morning. You need to focus on the finished work of Jesus. It's already a done deal. All you got to do is say, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I'll be saved. It's new. I believe you have some prayer, prayer team. If you could take your positions here, if you could go ahead, you're stepping through that door of opportunity right now. Whatever you need from the Lord, there needs to be a step of faith to do that. Abraham, everywhere he went, he built an altar in the beginning. He built an altar. And he'd dig a well. And I'm going to ask you this morning, Whatever your need is, whatever you're, you're, you're believing God for a new year, these are doors. I'm going to ask you to just step out of your pew right now. Find, your, find you a place in front of these prayer partners. And let's, let's start the new year out right with this spiritual emphasis. Would you come? Come on. Come on. Come. You say, I need healing. He's the Lord our God that heals us. I need salvation. He saves us. I need deliverance. I have strongholds in my life. I need deliverance. He will set us free. He will set you free. Come on. We need to move. We need to move. Come on, let's worship him for a moment this morning. Let him, just as the Lord begins to direct you, you just take, your, take a step out.